African play It's a song of the forgiven Drowning out the Amazon rain The song of Asian believers Filled with God's holy fire It's every tribe, every tongue, every nation A love song born of a grateful Just heard Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. Welcome to worship. This Sunday we celebrate Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday is always celebrated the Sunday after Pentecost as we celebrate the fullness of God's love for us and the fullness of God's work in us, among us, and through us. God the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that whosoever believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. God the Son who came all the way from heaven to earth for our sake lived among us a sinless life went all the way to the cross of Calvary, died for our sake, and on the third day arose with power and might, conquering our deaths and giving us hope in this life and in eternity, and ascending to heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty to advocate for us and God the Holy Spirit who came upon the church and filled the believers with power from above and gave them credibility to live a life of witness to Jesus our Lord and Savior. This God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit 
one God, our God, is active in our lives, working for us and in us and on our behalf and working through us for the healing and transformation of the whole world. Please allow me to lead you in prayer at this moment. Come, eternal God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Come and knit us together and make us one as we worship you this day. Amen. The first disciples faced many threats. How did they pray and how did they respond? Acts 4 verse 29 to 31 gives us an important clue. We read that they prayed saying, Lord, take note of the threats we face and enable your servants to speak your words with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the, with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. In, recent, in a recent protest, I saw a gentleman carrying a sign that read, Prayer is not enough. In all honesty, I believe that this is our fault. May God forgive us. Because we have given people the impression that prayer is just words. We talking to ourselves and mentioning God every now and then. Truth be told, I have seen and heard prayers that don't even mention God. But real prayer in the name of Jesus, on the other hand, has tremendous power. As we read when they prayed, even the place where they were meeting was shaken and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the Word of God boldly. Real prayer invites the mighty and powerful hand of God to be stretched, to be stretched out to heal and perform signs and wonders. In a recent protest, I saw a police officer hanging or hugging an African-American clergyman. Both had tears in their eyes. In one of yesterday's papers, there was an image of a police lieutenant hugging a protester. Again, both had tears in their eyes eyes. If you ask me, that's the hand of God reaching out to heal. And I celebrate that. I have no doubt someone was praying that day. Yes, real prayer leads to prayerful action. Prayerful action is powerful action because it taps into the very power, the unlimited power of God.
God. Real prayer shakes loose in us what needs to be shaken loose. Fear, indifference, apathy, doubt, bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, low self-esteem, insecurities, you name it. It shakes loose in us what needs to be shaken loose and allows the mighty and the loving and the caring and the graceful hand of God to touch us, to bring healing to us and to do amazing things in us and yes, through us. Here are some thoughts that I would like to share with you on how the disciples prayed. First, they prayed saying, Lord, there are many threats that face us. Please, Lord, take note of these threats. Keep your eye on them. Keep your eye on them. Take care of us as we face these threats. This one, O oh God, is on you. Lord, we are in a covenant relationship with you. We are yours, Lord, and you are ours. On that night, Lord Jesus, you took the cup, you gave thanks, and then you gave us the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant between me and you, the new covenant in my blood, the new covenant sealed, secured forever with my blood my blood which is shed for you. You take this seriously, we take this seriously. It's an eternal covenant, Lord. You have established with us this new covenant and you sealed it with your blood. The threat that we face is the threat that you face. So the disciples said, take note, Lord. Keep an eye, Lord, on these threats that face us. Don't let these threats harm us. Don't let them destroy us. Don't let them overwhelm us. Instead, let it only as your word says in Romans 8 28 let them only work for our good now we are facing many threats in our own time and here are a few that we ought like the disciples to bring before the Lord and to say to him keep your eye on these threats. The first threat that I would like to highlight is the threat of COVID-19. Yes, it continues. Lord, more than 100 and 11,000 have died in the United States alone. The global figure is 393,000. Lord, the grief, the pain, the isolation, the devastating effects, 
and the economic impact on so many take not Lord of this threat the second threat that I would like to highlight is the threat of racial tensions and yes even racism and this threat is on the rise Lord take note Jim Wallace jr. who is the founder and editor of Sojourners magazine has referred to racism as America's original sin racism is a very serious sin it's a sin against God the Father the Creator because we are all created in God's image and to undermine and uh, degrade a human being created in God's image is a sin against the Creator God so yes it's a sin against God the Father the Creator but it's also a sin against God the Son the Redeemer who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to save whosoever believes in him and to make us one body and racism segregates racism separates us Jesus died on the cross to make us one and the sin of racism is a sin against God the Son because it separates us and it segregates us but it's also a sin against God the Holy Spirit the sanctifier this sin grieves the spirit and quenches suffocates the spirit and the work of the Spirit in us in addition let me remind you and all of us that one day very soon Jesus our Lord will return and will take us to be with him forever where we will join in an eternal assembly that will include the redeemed from every tribe from every nation from every tongue from every people and we will worship the Savior together forever and for ever and though that some of us might have trouble here relating to a brother or a sister because of the color of their skin we have time to repent and we must repent thirdly the third threat that I would like to share is the threat of discord this unity polarization and fragmentation this threat unfortunately is also on the rise and we have seen in recent years attempts by different sides to demonize the other take note Lord of this very serious threat that faces us and finally the threat of deception and wrong teaching in the church because of lack of spiritual discernment that threat is 
also on the rise. Take note, Lord. The Word of God tells us in Galatians 5.16 to walk in the Spirit and not to fulfill the desires or the lust of the flesh. But because our culture emphasizes satisfying the desires of the flesh, what is important becomes that which is sensual, that which is material, as opposed to that which is eternal, that which is spiritual in nature. Living a spiritually disciplined life is crucially important. Otherwise, we drift away. And in the words of the prophet Isaiah, begin to call evil good and good evil. This is the threat that faces us, Lord. Please take note, Lord. Secondly, as the disciples prayed, they said, Lord, in the face of these threats, that we have asked you to keep an eye on, to take note of. In the face of these threats, enable us, give us the ability to speak your word, not our word, and give us to speak your word boldly. This one is on us, Lord, but we definitely need your help. In facing the threats that we are facing, it's important for us as believers in Jesus Christ to learn to speak God's word, not our own. God's word is not brokenness, but it's healing in the midst of brokenness. If we speak our word, we will speak brokenness. But we are called upon to speak God's word in the midst of the threat with his help. So God's word becomes healing in the midst of brokenness. God's word becomes hope in the midst of crisis. God's hope becomes perseverance in the midst of the crisis. God's word becomes resurrection and new life in the midst of the crisis. The disciples prayed saying, Lord, in the face of all of these threats, enable us, give us the ability to speak your word, Lord, not ours, and give us to speak it boldly. And then finally, they prayed saying, Lord, now this one is totally on you, Lord. But Lord, this is a time where the need is so great for healing. And there is great need for more than words. Great need for you, God, to step in and do among us what only you, Lord, can do. So, Lord, would you please stretch out your hand to heal? Would you please stretch out your hand to perform signs and wonders 
through the name of your holy servant Jesus and here I'm reminded of that powerful verse in 1st Corinthians 420 where we read that the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk but of power the disciples knew that and they knew the great need for healing and the great need for the power of God to be manifested in the lives of people and that's why they cried out and said Lord it's not by talk but would you please stretch out your hand to heal would you please stretch out your hand to do signs and wonders to do things that only you can do to change reality as we know it to do the extraordinary the miraculous because you are God and you are God alone that's how the disciples prayed and when they prayed the place where they were meet, meeting shook and they were filled with the Spirit of God and they began to speak the Word of God boldly and I want to say to you this is what we need today true prayer prayer to invite God to keep his eye on the threats that face us to name them before the Lord and to say Lord it's in you that we put our trust keep your eye Lord on these threats that face your church Keep your eye, Lord, on these threats that face your people. Keep your eye, Lord, on these threats that face your creation. But then to move on and to say, and Lord, would you please give us boldness as we speak your word, Lord. Give us a word from you. Give us a word from your heart and give us boldness to speak it this is not a time for us to speak our own word this is a time for us to receive a word from the Lord and to speak it with boldness and then finally realizing that the kingdom of God is not just a matter of talk but of power lord we are dependent on you would you please stretch out your hand to heal would you heal us lord would you heal our land would you heal our church would you heal our home would you heal our relationships? Would you heal the United Methodist Church? Lord, stretch out your hand with might and power and heal. Stretch out your hand with might and power to do signs and wonders that will reflect your might and your power that is the prayer that we need to pray today and I want to tell you we pray this prayer even today would you please bow your head with me and let us pray Creator God, Redeemer God, 
sustainer God, we humble ourselves in your presence. And we ask you, Lord, to come and bring your healing among your people. Come, O oh God, stretch your arm and do things that only you can do. Wonders and signs. Come, O oh God, and give us a word from your heart. And give us to speak this word, not our own, but your word, boldly. And Lord, would you please keep your eye on every threat that faces us at this time. This we pray in the mighty and powerful and matchless name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now I would like to invite us to consecrate ourselves and our families and loved ones completely to the Lord, to say to Him, Lord, we are yours, and Lord, we rejoice in knowing that you are ours. You have consecrated yourself to be our God forever and ever. And now we consecrate ourselves to you, O oh God. And those of us who are called to bring forth a gift to the Lord, an offering, Lord, would you receive our gifts and our offerings we give them to you as a sign of our commitment to be in partnership with you, to do your work in this world. You have called us to be your partners. So we come to you, we are yours, but we bring our gifts and our offerings to honor you and to invest in your eternal kingdom. And as we consecrate ourselves and consecrate our gifts and offerings, we also come today to honor and celebrate our graduates this year. And last Sunday we celebrated some of our graduates and today we have even more graduates to celebrate. Lord, I pray as we mention the names of our graduates that you may bless each and every one of them, that you may bless their families and their loved ones. So today we honor and celebrate Qatari Smith, daughter of Kim Smith, who graduated from Springwood Middle School. And in the fall, she will attend Lake Park East Campus. Congratulations, Qatari. We are very proud of you. But we also celebrate today Brandon Vasquez, son of Julie and Diego. Graduated from Springwood Middle School and again in the fall uh, he will attend Lake Park East Campus. Congratulations, Brandon. We are very proud of you as well. And finally today, we celebrate Nicholas Waldrop, the son of Michelle and Don. Nicholas is one of my, uh, uh, I want to say one of my heroes. I've learned so much uh, from him, his tenacity and, uh, and the strengths that he has shown over the years. Nicholas graduated from uh, Medina Middle School and in the fall he will attend uh, Lake Park East Campus and congratulations Nicholas, we are all very proud of you. Would you allow me at this time to lead you in prayer? Lord, we come to you as we are 
and we ask you to embrace us as you are with the fullness of your love and with the fullness of your grace reach out O God and heal us reach us reach out O God and transform and change us from the inside out reach out O God and fill us with your Holy Spirit as you filled the disciples with your Holy Spirit O God may you continue to work in us O God to make us more and more like Jesus and would you continue to work through us O God to heal and to transform the world around us and Lord we thank you for our graduates we ask that you may bless each and every one of them and their loved ones and their families we ask that you may draw them closer to yourself that you may uh, bless them Lord and bless uh, their next steps all of this we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord and Savior in his name we join together even as we pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever Amen.